Today we will be solving a viewer suggested problem which is from the Romania District Mathematical Olympiad 2022. So we will find all functions f that match from the real number to the real number. We satisfy the following relationship for all x, y that is being real number. So it is a functional equation type problem. So in this case, we have the following functional equation over here. Where in the left hand side, we have the following function which is f of the inner part is f of y minus x minus x times by f of y plus f of x is equal to y times by 1 minus f of x. So in general, when it comes to solving functional equation type problem, you just have to substitute as many values as you can for the variables x and y in order to deduce more information about the function f. And then ultimately, you reduce this complexity you have at the first into a simpler functions in order to deduce all family of functions that satisfy this function equation. So in this video and all of my upcoming functional equations type video, I'll usually denote this whole equation over here that is being given as P of X and Y. So over here, first I'll just plug in some easy values for X and Y, which in this case will take P of 0 and X. And then we see that this gives us F of F of X plus F of 0 is equal to x times by 1 minus f of 0. And then now we have two things to consider. Where in the first case, you consider the case that f of 0 is equal to 1. And in the second case, we'll consider f of 0 is not equal to 1. The reason being is that on the right hand side over here, we see that this function over here is a zero function. If we know that f of 0 is equal to 1, and it is a linear function when f of 0 is not equal to 1. So in the first case over here, we see that if f of 0 is equal to 1, we know that f of f of x is equal to negative 1 for all x that is being a real number. So now, because we have f of f of x is equal to negative 1 for all x that is being a real number, this tends to tell us that f is a constant function in this case. But by looking back to our original function equation over here, we can easily see that f cannot be a constant function because of the fact that this variable y over here. So now what we can do is that we can derive a contradiction in this case to show that this case must not hold. So how do we derive contradiction? Well, we can see that f of negative 1 is equal to f of f of f of x by simply just applying the function f on both sides of this equation. And then we know that this is also equal to negative 1 because of the fact that we can view this x variable over here as being substituted by f of x, which is also a real number. And now this implies that f of negative 1 is equal to negative 1. And then we can derive the contradiction by observing that p of negative 1 and negative 1 will give us f of f of 0 plus f of negative 1 is equal to negative 1 minus f of negative 1 minus f of negative 1. And now in this case, we can substitute this f of negative 1 is equal to negative 1 into here. And also f of 0 is equal to 1 in this case. And in the end, you see that you end up with the following case is that f of 1 minus 1, which is also equal to f of 0. And this is equal to negative 2 plus 1, which is equal to negative 1. And then we see that this implies that f of 0 is equal to negative 1, which is an obvious contradiction. So therefore, this first case must not hold. So this means that f of 0 is not equal to 1. So we we'll move to the second case. So in the second case over here, we see that we have that f of f of x is equal to x times by 1 minus f of 0 minus f of 0. And then now I have a small exercise for you guys is to show that over here, based on this fact over here, you can show that f is bijective, meaning that we have f is injective and also surjective. So now using this fact over here, we know f of t is equal to zero for some real value t. And then by knowing this fact, we can effectively use this t value over here as a tool for us to find the value of f of zero. The reason being is that if we can pinpoint down this f of zero, then we can effectively see that this equation over here we have on the right hand side is just a linear function, which is easier for us to deal with. So now in this case, I will try some values, which here I will choose p of zero and t, 
you can see that f of f of t plus f of 0 is equal to t times by 1 minus f of 0. And then now you can see that this whole thing over here is equal to f of 0. So which means that simplifying everything, you can get that t is equal to 2 times by f of 0 over 1 minus f of 0. And then you can use the value p of t and t. So you can get that f of f of 0 minus t times by f of 0, or I should say t times by f of t plus f of t is equal to t times by 1 minus f of t. And then we can note that this f of t over here are all being 0. And in the end, you get that f of f of 0 is equal to t. And for the final one, I'll consider p of 0 and 0, which you can see that this gives us f of f of 0 is equal to negative f of 0. And then now, you can see that what we get is that 2 times by f of 0 over 1 minus f of 0. We know that this over here is equal to t, but what is t? t is equal to f of f of 0, and in that case, it is also equal to negative f of 0. So we get that t is equal to negative f of 0. And look now, we have an equation that we have only f of 0. So we can solve this equation over here, which in the end, you can get that f of 0 is equal to 0 or 3. So now we see that we have two subcases to consider. So we'll move to the next section to consider two subcases. So for the case 2.1, we'll consider the case that f of 0 is equal to 0. So we'll first take p of negative x and 0, which we can see that this will give us f of f of x is equal to negative f of negative x. And also we can take p of 0 and x, which will give us f of f of x is equal to x. So this implies that we have that negative f of negative x is equal to x, which means that f of negative x is equal to negative x. And now you can make a substitution about this negative x, where we let x to be negative x, which in this case you get f of x is equal to x for all x that is being a real number. So this is a solution to our functional equation, and this is the first solution to this one. Then for the case 2.2 where we have f of 0 is equal to 3, in our previous section we know that f of t is equal to 0, where we define t to be 2 times by f of 0 over 1 minus f of 0. And then by noticing that f of 0 in this case is equal to 3, we know that t is equal to negative 3, which means that f of negative 3 is equal to 0. And now we can take p of negative x minus 3 and our y to be negative 3, we see that this gives us f of f of x is equal to 2 times by f of negative x minus 3 minus 3. And for the second one, we'll take p of 0 and x, which will give us f of f of x is equal to negative 2x minus 3. And then we can equate these two things over here, which we can see that we have that 2 times by f of negative x minus 3 minus 3 is equal to negative 2x minus 3. And now we can cancel off this negative 3 both sides and also divide out these two. So we will leave us with f of negative x minus 3 is equal to negative x. And then we can make a substitution where we let x to be negative x minus 3 in this equation over here, which will end up with the following solution, which is f of x is equal to x plus 3 for all x that is being a real number. But now, I want you to plug this back into our original functional equation, and I'll leave this as an exercise for you to show that this function over here, which is f of x is equal to x plus 3, is not a solution to our functional equation. And so this means that our function f in this case is just f of x is equal to x, which is the only solution that we have in this case. So this solves this functional equation over here. And if you want to solve more functional equation type problem, then be sure to check out this video over here.